Welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a beautiful piece of wall art that features a gorgeous inlay design your friends and family will love. You can then use your newly learned technique to create your own unique pieces to give as gifts or sell to admiring customers. Since I'm a firm believer in thoroughly understanding how something works, I'm going to begin by explaining not only what we are trying to accomplish, but more importantly, why we'll use the techniques I will subsequently teach you. Do not skip this part of the video. I promise that the few minutes spent watching and understanding this part will pay dividends in the long run. The diagram shows two pieces of material, each one inch thick, flat, and square. The inlay part is fitted into the base part so that 0.09 inches of inlay material is perfectly inserted into the pocket created in the base. In addition, 0.02 inches of space is also created between the horizontal portions of both pieces. This leaves space for glue between the actual inlay portion and the base. Additionally, it leaves the same amount of space between the two non-inlaid portions of the parts, allowing you to more easily remove the excess inlay material from the base using a couple of different methods of your choice. Let's begin understanding how to accomplish this by taking a closer look at the base piece. The two dashed vertical lines represent the locations of the vectors on the surface of the base where the V-carve bit needs to remove material for our inlay to fit into. Here, we will use a V-carve toolpath that begins at the surface of the material set to a final flat depth of 0.11 inches. This should be easy to understand from the diagram. Now let's look at the next diagram. Notice that the total thickness of the inlay material is 0.91 inches, where the dashed vertical lines represent the locations of the vectors on the surface of the inlay material, and the dashed horizontal line represents the surface of the material. In this case, in order to create this part, we would create a V-carve toolpath using the exact same V-bit used on the base part, setting the beginning depth to the surface of the material and a final flat depth of 0.02 inches. This should also be easy to understand from the diagram. If we were to insert this inlay part into the base we created, the parts would come together perfectly, but there would be 0.09 inches of space between the bottom of the inlaid portion and the top of the pocket in the base. In addition, there would not be any gap between the non-inlaid portions of the two pieces. How do we overcome this problem and carve our inlay material correctly? Let's examine the next diagram to discover the solution. Notice here that the thickness of our material is one inch. As illustrated, if you imagine uniformly removing 0.09 inches off the top of this carved piece, the resulting part would be identical to what we obtained in the previous diagram, and we would have a part that measured 0.91 inches in greatest thickness. With a little thought, the solution should present itself. Rather than setting the start depth of our V-carve toolpath at the surface of the inlay material, it needs to be set at 0.09 inches deeper into the material than the surface itself. From that point, the bit should cut down to a final flat depth of 0.02 inches. With those settings, we obtain the part illustrated in the current diagram. Putting the two pieces together, our parts fit perfectly, leaving the space allowances we desire. Understanding these concepts should now allow you to create your own inlay designs and possibly tweak your settings if necessary to ensure lasting creations that will survive their intended environment. For example, if you wanted to create an inlaid cutting board, you might want the inlay to be thicker than 0.09 inches and the gaps to be different. It's completely up to you. With these important concepts firmly established, we will now move on to the project. Let's begin by opening our software and creating a new file. Choose a single-sided job with a width of 18 inches, height of 12 inches, and thickness of 3 quarters of an inch. The Z0 position will be on the material surface, XY datum position in the center, standard modeling resolution, and maple as the material. Clicking OK will bring us into the 2D view, 
with the drawing tools on the left. We're going to use a file that you can download from VectEasy. I've attached a link in the description. The file is free for you to use if you agree to the conditions of VectEasy's free license agreement. After reviewing that, click the free download button and without having to log into anything, just click proceed with download. After the file is downloaded, extract the contents to a destination of your choice. Returning to your Vectric software, select the import bitmap option under file operations, locate the file, and import it. As our image is already selected, click the trace bitmap tool. This tool will allow us to convert any bitmap into 2D vectors. Since this is a black and white image, select black and white and leave everything else at the default settings. Click preview to see the 2D vectors that will be created with the settings we selected. As the created vectors were accurately created, click apply and close the trace bitmap panel. Next, let's go to our layers panel. Notice that the software automatically created a unique layer for the bitmap we imported. It does this automatically for all imported bitmaps. The vectors we created from the bitmap can be found in layer one. Let's turn off the visibility of the bitmap layer to declutter the workspace and click anywhere in the 2D view to close the layers panel. Since we will create unique text, delete the current text by selecting it and hitting the delete key. Now select the remaining vectors and click our selection to put it in transform mode. Enlarge the vectors to an appropriate size for the project, then deselect the vectors. I'm also going to delete the three tiny vectors since we really don't need them. Now we'll add text. We're going to learn how to use a new tool, the draw text within a vector box tool. Select the tool and in the bounding box dimensions area, create a box 18 inches wide and two inches tall. Notice a box with the chosen dimensions is outlined by a dashed line in the center of our material. Now type homestead cabin in the text field and observe what happens as you type each letter. The software automatically changes the size and spacing of the text to fit the box. Now select the true type font Courgette and close the tool. Go back to our 2D view, click the text vector twice to put it in transform mode and position the text so it is centered below the cabin. After creating text, it's always advisable to zoom in to make sure that we have no areas of vector overlap and that the vectors are smooth without any significant jagged edges. Since they look good, let's rename the layer Base. Click outside the layer panel to close it. The next step is very crucial. If you don't perform this step, the inlay will not be carved correctly and will be unusable. So, select all the vectors Choose the Mirror Selected Objects tool and then make sure that the options to flip about the job center and create a mirrored copy are checked. Next, select Flip Horizontal and close the tool. With the newly created vectors already selected, let's move them to their own unique layer. Right click on the newly created vectors and choose Move to New Layer. Name the layer Inlay. Choose to have this new layer both visible and active. Next, go to the Layers menu and turn the visibility of the base layer off. You should now see only the contents of the inlay layer. The last step is to create a boundary vector around these vectors. Let's use the Polyline tool. Simply click once where you want to begin and click again to create a line. Continue clicking points to create a boundary around the inlay. The last point you click will be at the start point. This will create a single closed vector boundary around the inlay vectors. 
All our 2D vectors are now created. Let's switch to the CAM portion of our software and create our toolpaths. Turn the visibility of the inlay layer off and turn on the visibility of the base layer. Then make the base layer active. Now select all the vectors. Before creating the toolpaths, be sure to check the material setup. The thickness is correct at 3 quarters of an inch. Change the XY datum position to the bottom left. The Z0 should be set to the top of the material. Lastly, only after confirming that the Z gaps and home start settings are safe and appropriate for your setup, click OK. Now select the VCarve Toolpath tool. The VCarve Toolpath cutting depths are the other critical settings that must be set correctly to get great results. We're going to use settings that will give us 0.02 inches of space between the bottom of the inlay and the surface of the pocket that the inlay inserts into. This allows space for glue. The settings will also allow 0.02 inches of space between the two work pieces once they're glued together and the clamps are removed. Lastly, they are designed to allow an adequate glue surface area for the inlay itself. The start depth for our base material should be set to 0 inches with a flat depth of 0.11 inches. We will use a 90 degree half inch V bit. So select the bit and make certain that the machining parameters are safe and appropriate for your machine. Choose the tool number and change the tool number to 1. Click Apply and then Select. Since we have a lot of material that needs to be cleared away, let's use a clearance tool. Select the half inch end mill and make certain that the settings are safe and appropriate for your machine. Change the tool number to 2, then click Apply and then Select. As our material is square in shape and the grain of the wood will run horizontal, let's select a raster pattern of cutting with a climb cut and raster angle of 0 degrees. This raster angle means that our bit will cut horizontally back and forth across our material. If we select 90 degrees, it will cut vertically up and down the material. If we choose any other angle, the bit will cut at that raster angle. Leave the next sets of boxes unchecked and click Calculate. Let's now preview all toolpaths and inspect our V-Carve in the 3D view, making sure that everything looks good. As this looks as we expected it to, let's rename the toolpaths appropriately. Rename the clearing toolpath as Clear 1 half inch EM Base, and the other as V-Carve 90 Base. Now reset the toolpath preview, close the preview toolpaths window, Go to the 2D view, and then open the Layers palette. Turn off the visibility of the base layer, turn on the visibility of the inlay layer, and select it to make it the active layer. Select all the vectors. We will now repeat the same process that we performed on the base layer vectors with a few changes. Select the V-Carve Toolpath tool. Just as before, the start depth and flat depth parameters are critical to set correctly. Set the start depth to 0.09 inches and the flat depth to 0.02 inches. Notice that 0.09 inches plus 0.02 inches equals 0.11 inch. This sum should always be the same as the flat depth set in the V-Carve toolpath of the base layer. It's also very important that we use the same exact tool we used to cut the base part. Choose the 90 degree V bit, making sure that the settings are safe and appropriate for your machine. We will use the half inch end mill for clearing most of the material, again making certain that the settings are safe and appropriate for the machine you are using. The remaining settings in the V-Carve toolpath panel should be set identical to what we used for the base layer vectors. Let's calculate and preview the new toolpaths. Inspecting the 3D view, our inlay part looks great. Now rename the toolpaths Clear 1 half inch EM inlay and VCarve 90 inlay. We can now save our toolpaths and get ready to machine our parts. 
In the next video, you'll see how I machine my parts and complete the project. I hope you enjoyed this video and look forward to seeing the project machined and assembled in the next. If so, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and hit the notification bell so that you'll be immediately notified when my next video becomes available. Have a great day.